The importance of linking and overrides is not immediately obvious, but without them, making a film is impossible. So do pay attention, as this is one of those things that you must get right. Fortunately, it's not hard. A bit like any game, the rules may feel weird when you start, but you soon get into the flow and it all becomes second nature. Imagine if the whole film was a single file. Only one person could work at a time, and that file would be far too complicated to work with. It would probably crash your computer. Instead, we split the film over many files, enough that everyone always has something to do. One file per asset works. Linking allows this. You can pull anything from one file into another. A prop into a set, for instance. It is not making a copy. If you edit the original file, the linked version updates to the new version. This is how everyone works in parallel. Overrides go even further and allow linked assets to be edited. They do their best to merge any local edits with edits in the original asset. The main use of overrides is for animating characters, which otherwise link in as statues. Remember the need to communicate. You must name assets so that other team members know which one to use. Generic names such as book one when you have an entire library can be just as bad as no name at all. To add to that, if you find a badly named asset, get it fixed. Nearly all of the time you link using collections, which are found in the outliner. That means that a brand new blender file is almost ready for linking. The default cube is inside the collection named collection, which is what you will be linking from another file. You do need to rename it to something descriptive, however. There are two more things we need to do. Firstly, assets have an origin. When you link them, this is where they will appear. It is also what they will rotate around. The origin of the world is the origin of the collection, and hence of the asset. It is convenient for it to be at the bottom center of an object, as this makes it easy to position in the set. In this case, we can just move the cube up by one unit. You will also want to think about scale. Secondly, you only want to include the actual asset in the collection. You don't want to include the lamp or the camera. You could delete them, but you want them for test renders. So instead, move them outside the collection. That way, they won't be included when you link the collection, but are still available for preparing your asset. Now, let's link it into this set. Know that the file is already saved to disk, you must always link from a saved file, as otherwise the link will be unique to your computer and break when another team member tries to use it. Before linking, I'm going to place the 3D cursor roughly where I want the linked object. Under File, click on Link. Browse to the asset you want, but you're not just opening the file. Double click on the Blender file to browse into it. You can now see everything in the file. We want a collection, so click on that. Link the desired collection and it will appear in your set. Note how it is automatically sitting on the surface. That's because it appears at the 3D cursor, which I positioned by clicking on the ground earlier. This is why we want the origin to be at the bottom center of an asset. We may now do some set design. duplicating if you wish. Note that you can't edit it. There is no edit option. That has to be done back in the original file. Here is the prop file again. So let's edit the cube to be a bit more like a crate. Back to the set. It is still showing the original default cube, however, because Blender hasn't reloaded the linked asset. The easy way to refresh the set is to simply save and reopen it, as when you open a Blend file, all links are reloaded from scratch. Alternatively, you may open the Blender file view in the outliner, then scroll down and find the relevant file. Right click on it and choose Reload to avoid reloading Blender in its entirety. 
almost all links are to collections, and for some films that is enough. But there are situations where you might want to link something else. For instance, we might want to grab a wood material from another file for this crate. Under File, click on Link. Browse to the Shelves prop. This time, enter the Materials section and select the relevant material. Collections are the only type that gets automatically created when linked. When you link anything else, nothing obvious happens. In the case of a material, it will be available in the drop-down list, so you can now assign it to the crate. Once your set is complete, you will need to link it into your shop files. Linked assets can be nested, so you can put your set into a collection and link that. It is just a very complicated prop. This can be a good idea because you can chop your set into parts and only bring in the parts needed. For instance, you could remove a wall so you can film through it. However, you can also link a set by linking a scene. In the set file, you will want to name the scene and also the world. Linking the scene has the advantage that you can't accidentally select the set, so it avoids errors but there isn't a lot in it. I typically prepare sets for both. We are now in a shot. To link a set via its scene, use the link menu again. But this time, browse into the scene section. Choose the scene you want. But nothing happens. To make it visible, you need to set it to be the background of the set. Under the Scene Properties tab, you will find the Scene Background. Choose the set, and it will appear in the current scene. Note, however, that the world is wrong. We also need to set that. So go to the World Properties tab and select the correct world from the drop-down. Note how the world came along with the scene automatically. Now, we're ready to bring in a character. Links allow you to pull in assets from other files. But all you can do is move them around. You can't do anything else with them. That is fine for props, but characters need to move. For that, we need overrides. Let's start with a simple demo. To override the object for this crate, we go to Object, then Relations, then Make Library Override. This will give us a choice of everything in the collection of which there is only the cube. Choose it and something weird happens. It snaps back to the origin. This is because it has reverted to its state in the library, where it is at the origin. Anything you're going to override must be placed at the origin and then overridden before being moved into place. Unless you like doing things twice. Let's move it back. Note how we are no longer moving the linked object. Instead, we're moving the override that we just created. If we press N to pull up the coordinates, note how they have gone below. That is Blender's way of saying that those numbers have been overridden. Note that animation colors are more important, so with animating, the blue will be replaced with those warm shades. We can now override many of the object's properties, though this can be a little intuitive. For instance, if I go to the material, I can't change it for another. This is because the material is assigned to the mesh and we haven't overridden that. Materials can be assigned to an object instead, however. That's what the data choice here is for. Switch it to object, and we can edit it. Note how only the overridden cube is affected. Overrides only remember what has been changed. In programming terms, they are a diff. If I add a modifier to this cube, that will be remembered and merged with any change from the linked file. So if someone were to add another modifier in the original file, that would then be combined in the new file. It has to guess the order, however. As a heads up, note that in Blender 2.83, the reload library trick doesn't yet update overrides. You have to save and reopen the file to see the change. In practice, the main use of overrides is characters, as you override the rig so you can animate. Overriding anything else is relatively rare. Let's add a character to this set. File then link, browse to collections, and link the character's collection. This is just normal linking. Tap Alt-G to reset location, then override the rig. Object, then relations, then make library override. 
the creator will hopefully have named the rig sensibly. We can now use the root bone to place the character and start animating exactly as normal. That's it. Sometimes it makes sense to put multiple assets in a single file, typically when they fit together and modeling one requires a reference to the other. Simply have more than one collection. Next to make library override is make proxy. This is the old approach and should no longer be used under any circumstances. You can override other things like materials by shift clicking the chain next to them Many of the resulting overrides don't work, however, at least in Blender 2.83. Overrides are still under development and missing many features. Because their most important uses for the armatures of characters, that all works. Modifiers also behave themselves as long as you're only adding them, but everything else may or may not work. For instance, shape keys do not work, so you still have to use drivers. Drivers are always recommended anyway, as animating controls in multiple places is awkward. It is possible to link the same character into a scene many times and put different animations on it. This plus nonlinear animation means it's possible to make a small, if repetitive, crowd quite quickly. Be warned that this is a few things that can go wrong, so talk to someone with experience first. In fact, if doing anything unusual with overrides, always ask and be prepared to conduct some experiments to determine if a specific scenario is safe. You can also link within a file. That is, use collections within the same file in the same way as those external to it. This is called instancing. This is useful for details that don't make sense to stick in another file. Leaves on a tree, bricks in a wall, or buildings for a particle system city. That kind of thing. Firstly, we make our new collection and give it a name. Now we can use the Add Object menu to create instances under Collection Instance. Incidentally, collections linked from other files also appear here. So that's easy, but there is a problem. We probably don't want the original visible and stuck at the origin. We can't move it out of the way because that offsets the instances. We can hide it, but when you hit render, it reappears. This is because it's marked to be rendered. But if we disable rendering in the outliner so it doesn't render, we lose all of the instances as well. The trick here is to use a libraries collection usually shortened to lib, create the collection and move our library into it. Now mark the library collection to not be rendered, leaving the instance collection renderable and you have what you want. A link exists in one file as a location in the second file to get content from. If the second file has changed, the link can break. It's best to avoid this. Links use names, so name everything straight away and never change it again. But mistakes happen, and if they do, you'll have to fix the broken links. When a link breaks, you may not notice immediately. Error messages may appear, but if you're not paying attention, you may miss them. But usually it is obvious. Your entire set vanishes from a shot file, for instance. Fortunately, you can just keep going until you notice. Blender will keep the broken link around until you either delete it or fix it. One of the two most common breaks is when a file name changes. Here the crates have vanished because the file has been renamed. Links are managed in the Blender file view of the outliner. The first entry is the current file, which is then followed by all of the linked files. The broken document icon indicates that the file can't be found. To fix this, right click on the file Select to relocate and browse and select the renamed file. Link corrected. The second common break is when the collection is renamed. In this case, link the collection again with its new name. This creates a second instance we don't need, so just delete it. Now go to the empty that instances the broken link and select the object tab. 
Under Instancing, use the drop-down to select the corrected collection. If an override is broken due to a name change you're in the danger zone, if it's a moved file, then that technique works, but the override doesn't fully recover until you save and reload after repairing the link. This is the end of this tutorial, but you need to get some practice in with a dance-off. A partial film has been provided. Your task is to create a shop file, then look through and pick a set. The dance floor, perhaps. Link it. Then pick a character. How about a giant ant? Again, link it. But this time, also override the rig. Now you can animate it dancing to some music. Real or imaginary? This is just practice, so don't spend a lot of time on it. Eight seconds of rough animation is more than enough.